Good evening to Guru Prakash of the BJP, Saurabh Shukla of the newsmobile.in, Sri Ram Choli, our contributor at Republic of International Affairs, Colonel Arasan Singh Saab, who is a strategic affairs expert, and Brigadier General Nidzan Nuriel, the former director of Counterterrorism Bureau at the Prime Minister's office at Tel Aviv. Uh, good evening to all of you, gentlemen. And, uh, you know, you can't have a debate about the fact, Sri Ram, that this no longer is anything localized. There is obviously a larger conspiracy here, Shriram, at hand. And how do we see this in the global picture? Uh, Deepthi, first of all, it's very sad that our soil, uh, Indian soil, is being used by uh, third parties to attack a second party. I mean, we uh, are neutral. We don't uh, have any, uh, you know, bone in this fight between Iran and Israel, which is focused on the Middle East and influence in the Middle East. So uh, and India has a friendly relations with both countries. So I don't think uh, it's right on the part of anyone to use our soil to do this kind of, uh, you know, terrorist uh, strikes. So I think we should be saying, conveying a message as our investigation progresses. If it is indeed the Iranians, we should tell them this is totally unacceptable. There was an attack in 2012. You will remember Deepthi when uh, Iranian agents yes. were suspected and uh, yes. nothing happened. But, you know, uh, Israeli diplomats were injured in Delhi, right here in the heart of Delhi. So um, I think uh, we mm. have strategic uh, ties with Israel. It's very important to give them confidence. It's good that Arnab uh, spoke about how the wishes of the people of India are with them because end of the day, they uh, diplomatic personnel are sacrosanct. You know, you cannot attack uh, them like this. That too, using proxies as the Brigadier General is saying. I mean, we have to really also step up uh, our scrutiny of uh, some foreign elements who may be in our country but then plotting attacks not against India per se or Indian interests but against other countries. You know, it has an implication for mm -hmm. our image also, Deepthi. I mean, uh, we, our Chanakya Puri, Vasant Vihar uh, areas in Delhi, our diplomatic heart core, uh, you know, the uh, enclaves are uh, prized uh, real estate where, you know, the whole world feels at home there. That's one of the attractions of uh, being posted in Delhi for diplomats. We cannot have a sense of fear or insecurity there. So I think we need to also beef up our own, um, you know, counterintelligence and to spot some of these activities. Sometimes our focus is always on thwarting terror attacks aimed at India itself. But this is aimed at a, at a third country. So I think that mm. uh, makes it more complex. So we need to cooperate more with the Israeli institutions. Uh, remember, uh, Jewish and Israeli people were actually killed in the Mumbai uh, attacks of 2008. You know, they were hunted down by yes. these uh, Pakistan-sponsored terrorists. There could be an ISIS angle also. Let's not rule out. Mm -hmm. There are also Sunni jihadist groups, not Iranians, who, are, who want Israeli blood and who hate Jewism and who are no, uh, Jewish uh, values and who are known for anti-Semitism. So I think those kind of elements also cannot be ruled out. Either way, whether it is a Shia jihadi or Sunni jihadi, it's a threat uh, to Israel and also a threat to India's interests, ultimately, if not directly to India. So it's something, a matter of great concern for us. We should not allow this cycle to be repeated. And if required, at the highest level, we should convey to whoever. I mean, we cannot convey to ISIS. There is no leadership with whom we have legitimate links. But if it mm -hmm. is Iran, definitely we should you know, confront them and tell them, this is not the way we have friendly relations. If we are going to buy your oil, if we are going to invest in Chabahar port, you cannot misuse our hospitality here in India and carry out these kind of acts. So I think there needs to be a multiple messaging, a diplomatic and also counterintelligence. I think that's the key to stop these kind of activities because this is obviously being done by trained people. If it's an IED device, it's being done by Absolutely. people who are capable of carrying out, you know, much bigger. And if the note that, the, that was mentioned in the media says this is just the trailer, then what is the picture? Are we waiting for something worse? I think we cannot allow this to happen on Indian soil. We are neutral in this. You know, Sriram, I think you have touched a raw nerve and you have actually, you know, I, I think put the focus yeah. back on so many yeah. important yeah. points. Yeah. I again want to pull you back, Sriram, up to what you were saying. Now, you also made that ISIS reference, Sriram. Uh, now, the Indian Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, was the first sitting Prime Minister who visited Israel in the year 2017, if I'm not wrong. Now, ever since 2017 to today, till date, you have seen this relationship only and only going stronger. Who are the enemies of this relationship, Sriram? Let's name them. 
Dipti, uh, you know, in the past, before uh, Prime Minister Modi came to power, there was uh, a politics uh, based on uh, appeasement of certain groups, and uh, distance from Israel was seen as necessary to appease these domestic groups. And frankly, we have you know, 200 million Muslims in this country. Most of them do not share this view. But there are some you know, selfish so-called mm. leaders of this community who have been uh, appeased in the past in the, uh, by distancing ourselves from Israel. So once uh, Prime Minister Modi came in and said national interests first, we will deal with Israel because it's mutually beneficial for India, and we and it also uh, it enhances our our security. So I think, uh, and by the way, Israel does many other things, agriculture and you know uh, startups, and there's so many other areas besides defense where India benefits from cooperation with Israel. So these so-called uh, moral guardians of a certain community came forward and they have been creating this notion that it's bad for us. Why are we abandoning the Palestinians? We did not abandon Palestinians. Even today, we finance the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah. So India has a balanced position. We did not abandon Iran. Even now, we need Iran for Chabahar and for our Afghanistan strategy. But they are not willing to understand that. For them, Israel is persona non grata. For them, Israel should not exist. It's not only the Iranians. We have some radical elements in our country who still say that Israel is illegitimate and does not have a right to exist. So they share the view of annihilation that the Brigadier General is talking about in some of the hardline Iranian uh, uh, state agencies. So what I'm saying is, but they are, radic they are mm -hmm. marginalized in the last six years. Uh, our uh, mainstream uh, Muslim community has come forward. They have no issues. They are Indians. They believe in Indian national interests. But some of them are being ideologically misguided. So I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see what the investigation comes up. I wouldn't be surprised if this is there is a foreign hand, but with complicity of some of these radical elements within the country who want to destroy our image, as Guru Prakash is saying, and who want to create a sense that in India is not unanimously in favor of the relationship with Israel. They want to try and break the strategic partnership we are building with Israel. That is why you have this date, the coincidence of the date of the diplomatic relations, when we normalized diplomatic relations in the 1990s, on the same date the attack was carried out in Delhi. It was a symbolic move. Terrorists generally choose dates very, very uh, cleverly to send across a political message. We don't want the India-Israel relationship to go forward. We don't care about India's national interest. That's what these groups are saying. You know, that's why we need to fight them. That's why we need to mm -hmm. uh, uncover them. And that's why it's very important. It's not only a law enforcement issue. This is about our strategic autonomy to make uh, the choices of who should be our partners in the world. So this is a foreign policy question. So it's right that Dr. Jay Shankar oh, yes. is involved now. We are creating assurances and confidence in the international community with the Israelis. But at the same time, domestically, the, the, these so-called, uh, you know, uh, leaders uh, who uh, radicalize youth, and push them towards ISIS or towards uh, anti-Semitic uh, and hatred of Jewish people. They need to be outed. They need to be brought out and they need mm -hmm. to be reformed or, you know, kept aside because otherwise this uh, cancer may spread. We will have more and already from Kerala, you know, a number of youth have gone to fight in Syria in the name of Jihad they are for ISIS. Uh, from North Kerala. So there is a problem in our country. It's not a huge thing. It doesn't, uh, you know, represent all our Muslims, most of whom are nationalistic. But the ones who are the bad apples, we need to corner them. We need to isolate them deeply. That's the only way to uh, prevent recurrence of these kind of unfortunate incidents. But it's been an enriching and a learning conversation. Thank you to all of you.